guys, welcome back. If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, my name is Annabelle and I like to make digital art and share things that I learn along the way. In this video, I'm going to be making a whimsical greenhouse scene in Procreate and sharing my process from start to finish. It's my first time attempting a background on this scale and it's also my first time in a while not making fan art for YouTube, so let's just see how this goes. To kick things off, I'm using the app VisRef to create a mood board full of reference images of greenhouses. I've gathered a variety of inspiring photos from Pinterest, including both artwork and real life images to help me understand the dimensions, perspective, anatomy, and also explore a few different stylization possibilities. I pretty much always do this before I start any piece, so this mood board is going to be my guiding companion throughout the whole drawing process. So now I'm gonna open up Procreate and show you what I've come up with so far. These are my incredibly rough sketches that show a couple different explorations for the composition of this piece. I had one idea with the greenhouse kind of at an angle in comparison to the viewer and another one where it's just head on and symmetrical. It's recommended to always do multiple sketches before going into a piece because your first idea might not always be your best idea. Previously, I was guilty of just doing one rough sketch and then plowing straight into the piece, but that was mostly my impatience taking the wheel. Now, I pretty much always force myself to do a second sketch, even if I'm really struggling with ideas. Sometimes it can be a bit of a painful process, but these sketches both took around 10 minutes each, so I was quite lucky this time. Next, I decided to play around with the color options a little bit before going into it, and I came up with these two color thumbnails. I wanted the color scheme to be predominantly green with a few different pops of color here and there and some warmth coming in from both the brick wall and the floor of the greenhouse. I actually couldn't decide which one I should continue so I asked my patrons to help me with this and they chose the one on the left so that is the one we're gonna work on together in this video. If you've seen any of my previous Draw With Me videos, this would be about the time where I start to go in with the line art. But this time I'm throwing a huge curveball, going totally off the rails and attempting to do this piece without line art altogether. Because the building in this piece is also gonna be at a three quarter angle to the viewer, I'm gonna try to do this drawing in two point perspective using the Procreate drawing guide tools to help. If you're a little unfamiliar with the different kinds of perspective, one point perspective uses just one vanishing point to give the illusion of depth and distance in a drawing, while two point perspective uses two vanishing points, which gives you a little bit more of a realistic and dynamic representation of the object within space. So I'm starting by turning on the perspective grid and putting down that very first vanishing point somewhere to the right off the edge of the canvas. Then I follow that with the second vanishing point somewhere off to the left and just adjust these points until the grid feels about right. Now that I have my canvas all set up, I am gonna bring back my mood board to help me figure out the structure of the greenhouse because unfortunately I am not a greenhouse expert and I need some assistance with this. I'm also gonna turn on the drawing assist function to help me with the perspective and to keep those lines looking straight. Instead of just going straight in with the shapes and the color, I'm actually gonna first make myself a little bit of a guide so that I don't get the perspective of the building completely wrong. To get an idea of how the full structure of the greenhouse looks in 3D space, I'm gonna break it down into some basic elements such as cuboids and triangular prisms. As you can see here, the main part of the greenhouse is represented by that cuboid. At this point, I've already faced my first challenge because I am unsure how to make the slanted roof look right in this perspective. So I Googled it. I found out that I first need to locate the center point of that front face of the cuboid by drawing a large cross that connects each four of the corner points together. The point in which these two lines intercept will be the center point for my roof. Then I can simply extend this line upwards and create two slanted lines that connect from that center point back to the top corners of the cuboid. Then I can repeat the same process for the back side of the greenhouse and I now have a fully functioning slanted roof that works for this two point perspective. Now I want to plan out that little side section of the greenhouse plus where the wall is going to be and that should take up about a third of the entire structure. Finally, I'm also gonna add in a space where the door frame should be plus those vertical panes of glass, both on the side closest to the viewer and the side furthest away. Even though some of these lines are overlapping and not all of them are gonna be included in the final piece, it's always good practice to draw through the shape so that you know that the structure is gonna be accurate. And here is my final guide of the greenhouse, which is hopefully really gonna help me out during the coloring process. 
Before I do go in with the color though, there is one thing that I want to figure out first, and that is the position of the sun. And no, I don't mean that sun, but I mean the hypothetical sun that is going to help determine where the light source is coming from in my drawing. In this case, I'm just going to put it somewhere in the top left corner of the canvas, and I'm going to try and keep this in mind while I'm doing the coloring process. After that, I'm going to push my mood board aside to give me a little bit more space to work with, and I'm also going to make my color thumbnail visible in the reference window. That was a whole lot of preparation, but we're now finally ready to begin with the real drawing. I want to start with the structure of the greenhouse first, and I'm actually going to approach this by using the selection tool, set both to rectangle and color fill mode in order to put down those first shapes. Then, just to make my life a whole lot easier, I'm going to duplicate that shape a number of times and clean up the edges to create those separators between the panes of glass. Now it's time to move on to the door frame and also that little ledge that rests on top of where the wall is going to be. You may notice that while I'm putting these shapes down, I'm not using the same shade of green. Instead, I'm trying to think in 3D and actively considering the lighting situation. So I'm making some parts that should be in the sun a little bit lighter and other parts that are meant to be in the shadow a little bit darker. I do try to keep everything on separate layers though so that I can easily adjust these colors as time goes on. Next, I want to move on to the little brick wall, which I'm going to draw manually using the dry ink brush to give it a little bit of rough texture on the outer edges. Next, I'm going back to the windows of the greenhouse. I'm sticking with the manual drawing technique now because many of these lines are either angled or curved and it's just so much easier to control by hand rather than using the selection tool, especially the rectangle selection tool. If I didn't have the guide to help me here, I think I would be literally screwed because there are so many small things to think about when you're drawing in two point perspective versus just one point perspective. It is so helpful to know already where everything is supposed to be. So this is the first stage of the greenhouse structure complete. I chose to focus on the part of the greenhouse that is closest to the viewer first, but now I'm ready to start working my way backwards through the interior and the other two remaining walls. For the basic interior, I'm going to start by doing the section of the brick wall that you can see on the inside and the floor. Even though I know there are going to be plants in here that will cover up certain parts of the wall, I still want to take the time to draw the entire structure so that I have the freedom to move these plants around if I want to without creating unsightly gaps which I have to then fill in. Maybe I was being a little bit impatient here, but I also really wanted to see what the greenhouse would look like with its glass. So I added this in on a new layer and reduced its opacity to create that glassy looking effect. Now I'm going to go back to add in some further details, such as the benches on the inside of the greenhouse and the pattern on the brick walls. I drew the brick pattern purposefully a little bit wobbly to give it a very organic and imperfect look, which I think creates quite a nice contrast in comparison with the very straight lines that we have right now in the windows of the greenhouse. Using the same brush, I also add a little bit of wooden texture onto the benches, plus add in the legs and also a bit of shadow on the underside. I also realized that the walls could do with a little bit more texture so I go in with a thick 6B pencil and kind of create random squiggles in both darker and lighter colors before smudging it out with the stucco brush. This creates quite a nice bricky looking effect. Bricky looking? Yeah, you get what I mean. And I'm actually pretty happy with how this is looking already. I think it's really starting to come together. Now that I've added all that texture elsewhere, I think I want to go back and add some texture and color variation to the windows of the greenhouse because they're starting to look a little bit plain. I begin by selecting a custom brush that I made called Rough Texture, which you can get if you subscribe to my Patreon, by the way. <laughs> and I also set the layer to Alpha Lock, which means I can only color within those particular shapes. In all honesty, there isn't really much method to this. I'm simply going in with whatever feels right. Just making sure to keep areas that are supposed to be in the sun nice and light and adding a bit of a darker textured gradient to areas that are supposed to be in the shadow. This is very subtle overall, but I think it looks better with a little bit of added roughness to it. Next, let's finally start working on the window panes of the back two walls. I'm choosing a significantly lighter color here because they are both further away and will have glass between them and the viewer. I think it'll also look a little bit less chaotic and heavy than giving everything the same color all over. 
over. Next, I'm gonna add some details to the very top of the roof. And with that, I am almost done with the structure of the greenhouse. The only thing left to do is the door, which I'm gonna start working on right now. I've actually made myself an additional guide to follow for the perspective of the door, since I figured out quite early on that planning is really important to get this perspective right. As well as drawing the basic structure of the door, I'm also gonna add a few more small details to make it a bit more interesting, such as a window, a door handle, some small golden joints, and a little bit of rough texture as well. These small things only take a few minutes to add each, but I think they make an enormous difference. And there we go. The structure of the greenhouse is already finished. I have to admit that my expectations weren't set too high when I first started this, but I think it's actually going surprisingly well. Now it's ready to be filled up to the brim with plants, which is how I like my office to be, how I like everything to be. This greenhouse is no different. I start out by adding some plant pots, making sure to draw pots with both different sizes and different colors to give a little bit of variety. I realized quite quickly that the windows were gonna be a bit of a nuisance while I'm drawing the plants, so I toggled off their visibility for the time being so that I can actually see what I'm doing, and that's much better. Now I start to add the plants themselves. As with the pots, I'm trying to keep variety in mind, drawing plants of different sizes, leaf shape, density, and color. I've learned when drawing foliage in general, it's important not only to have plants with different shades of green, but also different hues of green. This always looks a lot cooler and a bit more natural than having every leaf be either a lighter or darker variation of the same color. I'm also actively thinking about each plant's silhouette or outer shape and creating a little bit of negative space in between the leaves so that it doesn't become too cluttered or confusing to look at. I also like to add a few basic details such as veins on the leaves and branches, stuff like that. Going back to what I talked about earlier, I am so glad that I took the time to draw the entire interior of the greenhouse first because it makes the process of putting down these plants a hundred times easier. Now that I'm pretty happy with the contents of the greenhouse, it's time to bring back those windows. I actually decided to go back and change the opacity of the glass layer because I wanted to make sure that all of my hard work that I just did is actually easy to see. Watching this video back, it probably looks like everything I've done so far is pretty easy to do, but I think it's pretty safe to say I totally underestimated how long this drawing would take me. I'm pretty sure that by this point I was already almost eight to nine hours into the drawing process and definitely regretting my life choices because there was still a decent amount more to go. But it's way too late to turn back now. I am fully committed, so I start working on the background. I begin by setting the background color to a medium green, which I fill throughout the entire canvas minus the part of the greenhouse where the glass is. The next thing that I want to work on is the foliage from a tree that is overhanging in the top part of the canvas, kind of framing the composition. I decided to use the Procreate default Nico roll brush because I quite like its boxy shape and the texture. I'm approaching this by focusing on the details on the outer edge of the foliage, making sure to mark out the individual shapes of leaves that are kind of laid around in many different orientations. Again, I'm also trying to think about negative space by adding lots of holes in between the shapes to keep the structure looking light and airy. Instead, it should get denser as we go further up and deeper deeper into the tree where more leaves will be overlapping on top of each other. Next, I add in some branches and I set the entire foliage layer to alpha lock and add a slightly darker textured gradient coming from the top left corner. I also realize that the tree itself is a little bit light, so I make it a bit darker to add some more contrast. Now, I start to add in a couple more layers of foliage in the background, making them a little bit less detailed this time since they are pretty far out in the back. I've also purposefully chosen lighter colors for these layers of foliage because they give the impression that something is a bit further away and also creates a little bit of an ambient haze effect. And as I mentioned, instead of drawing any individual leaves and adding that intricate level of detail, instead I'm just kind of adding arbitrary clumps of lighter and darker color variation to make it look a little bit less flat. I also add in some more bushes with some delicate yellow flowers before deciding to go back and change the color of the background foliage because I realized it needed to be a bit lighter. As I'm moving forward in 3D space, getting closer to the greenhouse and the viewer, I start to focus on bringing a few more details back into the plants, making them just a little bit less abstract and putting more time into drawing individual leaves. 
I also want to use more vibrant and rich colors towards the front to give a little bit more contrast. After a little bit of reflection though, I realized that those bushes in the back with the yellow flowers are a bit too distracting, so I just turned them into regular bushes instead. When I'm working on this background in general, I'm going through quite a lot of trial and error with the bushes, kind of changing around the colors and the shapes until I land on something that I feel is interesting. I'm focusing on getting a range of different textures, so I want some to be pointy and sharp, some to be rounded and fluffy, etc. I'm basically doing whatever I can to get as much variety as possible. I've mentioned variety before and it's something that I am always trying to keep in mind. Next, I'm ready to work on adding some some cobblestones and I actually bring back the perspective guide to help me out with the positioning. I also use the alpha lock function again to add some textures to make them look a little bit more like stone. This includes a little bit of shadow along the bottom plus a few cracks in the rock since you often find that there are a few imperfections in stone. To save a little bit of time here, instead of drawing all of the bushes on the left hand side from scratch, I make use of the bushes that I've already drawn before by duplicating them, flipping them and changing their color. These are going to be partially covered by some plants I'm going to draw in the foreground so I think it's okay to take the easy route in this one particular case. For the foreground bushes, I'm basically applying the exact same principle for how I drew the foliage in the top left corner, but this time I'm keeping the edges of the leaves a little bit more crisp and also putting a bit more attention into the spacing between each leaf since they are a bit closer to the viewer. I also go ahead and clean up some of the flowers on the bushes because I realize that the edges are a little bit messy there, so I want to fix that. For the foreground on the right hand side, I wanted the focus to be on a bunch of cute little flowers that pop up right in front of the viewer. I wanted it to be like you're almost emerging from the bushes to find this beautiful whimsical greenhouse in a secret garden somewhere. I'm not really sure how well this works in reality, but I thought it was a cute idea. In all honesty, at this point, I'm kind of just making stuff up as I go along. For one of my last finishing touches, I want to add a couple of potted plants in front of the greenhouse since it feels like there's something missing in that space. And I decide to go for one flowering plant to add a pop of color, plus just a regular bush as well. Once that's done, I add a little bit of shadow beneath the stepping stones and the plants. And I also add a few small additional details to the grass to add a bit more texture. And with that, it is all done. Here is the final piece. Despite a few small challenges here and there and the ungodly amount of time it took me to make this, I'm pretty pleased with the final result. It's always such a refreshing experience to try something a bit outside of my comfort zone and explore new artistic territories. And I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like videos like this where I make digital art and share things that I learn along the way. I have lots more stuff just like it on my channel. And if you really, really liked it, please consider supporting my Patreon page where I have lots of exclusive tutorials, early access, behind the scenes, and brush packs, stuff like that. Lots of things. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at promoting things. Ah! The link will be in the description if you want to check it out. As always, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you all have a wonderful week and until next time, keep creating. Bye!